dear learners, in the last section, we learned all about the working of audio consoles. And now, we will learn how to install and disassemble the audio chain setup equipment. Now let us consider the features of important components like cables, connectors and other equipment to install the audio chain setups. Let's first take cables. Cables carry electric signals from one audio component to another. They are usually made of one or two insulated conductors, that's wires, surrounded by a fine wire mesh shield that reduces hum. Outside the shield is a plastic or rubber insulating jacket. On both ends of the cables are connectors. Cables are either balanced or unbalanced. An unbalanced line has a single conductor surrounded by a shield. The conductor and shield carry the signal. A balanced line rejects hum better than an unbalanced line. But an unbalanced line less than 10 feet long usually provides adequate hum rejection and costs less cables are also classified according to their function. In a studio, you will use several types of cables like power, mic, MIDI, speaker, USB, firewire, S slash PDIF, Tascam TDIF, LSS light pipe, guitar cords and patch cords. A power cable such as an AC extension cord or a power cord on a device is made of three heavy gauge wires surrounded by an insulating jacket. The wires are thick to handle high current without overheating. A mic cable is usually two conductor shielded. It has two wires to carry the signal surrounded by a fine wire cylinder or shield that reduces hum pickup. On one end of the cable is a connector that plugs into the microphone, usually a female XLR type. On the other end is either a 1 by 4 inch phone plug or male XLR type connector that plugs into your mixer or audio interface. An MIDI cable uses a 5 pin DIN connector on each end of the two conductor shielded cable. The cable connects MIDI out to MIDI in or MIDI through to MIDI in. A speaker cable connects a power amp to each loudspeaker. To avoid wasting power, Speaker cables should be as short as possible and should be heavy gauge. Number 12 gauge is thicker than 14 and 14 is thicker than 16. They can even be made from lamp cord that is zip cord. A USB cable or a fire wire cable connects peripheral device. An S by PDIF cable transfers a digital signal from one device's S by PDIF output to another device's S by PDIF input. It uses a shielded unbalanced cable, ideally a 75 ohm RG59 video cable with an RCA plug on each end. Now let's talk about connectors. Recording equipment also has balanced or unbalanced connectors built into the chassis. Balanced equipment connectors are of different types, that is 3 pin XLR type connector, 1 by 4 inch TRS tip ring sleeve phone jack. Now let's move on to unbalanced equipment connectors. 1 by 4 inch TS tip sleeve phone jack, a phone jack RC connector. Connectors can be confusing because a single connector can have several functions, usually not at the same time. Here are some examples. XLR, balance line input at plus 4 dBU, balanced mic input at 2 MV to 1 V or balance line output at plus 4 dBU. TS mono 1 by 4 inch phone jack. Unbalanced mic input, unbalanced line level input or output plus 4 dBU or minus 10 dBV instrument input. There are combi connectors like an XLR mic input plus a TRS input instrument level or line level. RCF phono, home studio line level input or output at minus 10 dBV composite video input output or SPDIF digital audio input output. There are many points which you need to observe before assembling sound equipment. 
You must know and visit the place in advance. Contact the person who will authorize you to work at site. Know the exact place where the sound equipment, that is loudspeakers, amplifiers, microphones will be required to be placed. Know the sockets from where the power supply will be drawn. Plan layout of power supply cables and power outlets to equipment. Ascertain the movement of people during the program. Ascertain the requirement and arrangements for placing equipment. Other equipment should also be transported in suitable boxes made for the purpose and lined with form cushion. End connectors of microphone cables, loudspeaker cables should be checked for appropriate connections to avoid embarrassment at the last moment. Always carry appropriate tools like screwdrivers, soldering iron, solder, flux to carry out minor repairs at site if need be. Make a list of inventory issued from stores. It will help you to return all the items to stores. Now let's talk about the placement of the equipment. The points which should be taken care of while connecting the equipment for actual functioning are Place the equipment appropriately on table to ensure ease of operation. That is, microphones should be placed where the singer or speaker will sit or stand. Amplifier speech processing equipment should be placed where sound assistant is to sit. Loudspeakers should be placed to enable equitable distribution of sound energy. Microphones should be connected to MIC inputs. Loudspeakers should be connected to appropriate level output impedance terminals of power amplifiers. Power supply switch of all the equipment should be checked to have been turned to 220 volts AC. In case 110 VAC equipment does not have a selector switch, a 220 volt 110 volt transformer is required to be used between power supply of 220 volts and 110 volts equipment. Now let's learn how equipments are assembled and connected. The instruction manuals of your equipment tell you how to connect each component to the others. In general, use cables that are as short as possible to reduce hum but that are long enough to let you make changes. Be sure to label all your cables on both ends according to what they plug into. If you change connections temporarily or the cable becomes unplugged, you will know where to plug it back in. Let's say you have a hardware mixer in your recording setup. Now here is the typical way to hook up the gear. Connect mic cables to the female XLR connectors in either the snake junction box or directly into mic inputs in a mixer or mic preamps. Set the output volume of synthesizers and sound modules about 3 quarters up. Using an MIDI cable, connect the MIDI out of an MIDI controller to the MIDI in of your audio interface or MIDI interface. If the mixer is a standalone unit, not part of a recorder mixer, connect the mixer's stereo line outputs to the inputs of an audio interface. Use a stereo RCA to RCA cable or two phone to phone cables. Connect the audio interface line outputs to the mixer's two track or tape inputs or directly to power speakers. If the mixer does not have internal effects, connect the mixer aux send connectors to effects inputs. Now, connect the effects outputs to the mixer aux return or bus end connectors. If you are using a separate mixer and multi-track recorder, connect mixer bus 1 to record track 1 in, connect bus 2 to track 2 and so on. And if you have several headphones for musicians, connect the mixer's headphone jack to a small amplifier to drive their headphones. So learners, I hope you have now understood how equipments are assembled, connected and dismantled. In the forthcoming lesson of the series, we will learn how to record and capture the sound. A due care should be taken while carrying out these functions.